Good morning and welcome to this special Father's Day service uh, and hymn sing where we praise God through song and celebrate Father's Day and God our Father. As we gather together today, we place all of our songs in the light of Christ. May this light shine, reminding us of God's love through our fathers and mothers and families. And as we sing, may our hearts lift in praise to God. We're going to be doing a lot of singing this morning, so we're glad you joined us for our hymn sing. Uh, if you're joining us later, uh, just ignore all my references to the morning time, and we're glad to have you with us. We hope we, you brought your singing voices, and in uh, the sanctuary this morning, we have a few singing voices with us. Please know everybody is at least 15 feet apart from one another, and we're going to be wearing our masks as we're singing just to keep everybody extra safe as we gather together for this special service. So we're so thankful to have you with us as we sing together. May we again feel God's love and know we are loved. Will you join with me in our call to worship? Come, let us sing praises to God. For God is a father to the fatherless and the defender of all who need protection, the one in whom the lonely find a home and the prisoner finds release. Bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, who sustains and strengthens us day after day. Let us worship our God with a song.
And our next hymn is This is God's Wondrous World, verses 1 and 2. If you've got a Voices United at home and you want to use it, it's on page 296. There once was a teenage farm boy who had recently started to drive on his own. One cold evening in January, he set out in the family car to attend a church youth event in the nearby village. The event wrapped up early, earlier than he had anticipated as participants were not too anxious to be out late on a cold, blustery January evening. But feeling adventurous and lured by the prospect of being able to go somewhere on his own, he began thinking of what he might do for the balance of the evening until he would be expected home. Recently, Bill, a good friend of his in his class at school had invited him to come for a visit. Bill lived in a neighboring town, a 20 minute drive away, almost around the corner in rural distance measuring. Why not, he thought. It would be fun to surprise his friend, find out where he lived. They'd have a quick visit and then he'd be off home and maybe no one else would need to know. In no time at all, he was at Bill's residence. And as he expected, Bill was quite surprised to see him. Bill's parents and older brother were there and the time quickly passed as they had a very enjoyable conversation on a wide range of topics. Suddenly, and with a shot of panic, he realized that it was nearly 11 p.m. He quickly headed home, intending to use a shortcut to save time. All went well, until he turned onto a side road that was a key part of the shortcut. 100 yards down this road, the car plunged into a snowdrift. 
and was immediately stuck. Being a farm boy, he knew instinctively that he would need to get help to get unstuck. He walked and ran to a farmhouse where he had noticed lights just as he had turned onto the side road. He was very relieved when his knock was answered. However, he quickly learned that everyone in the house was ill and no one would be able to come to his assistance. Fortunately, the telephone worked. The boy's mother answered his call and after hearing his situation, roused his father, who was an early to better, as is common with those who milk cows for a living. Fortunately, father knew the shortcut quite well and also knew that the important side road was not maintained during the winter months. Father would call a nephew who lived nearby for a ride and the two of them would be there as soon as they could. Meet at the car. The father's plan worked. They arrived with shovels and ashes for traction and had the car unstuck in no time at all. Of course, the boy had no choice but to ride home with father, now the driver. Not able to stand the silence for long, the boy blurted out his apology and admitted to being pretty stupid about the whole thing. Father nodded and all he said was, you are safe. Given the circumstances, nighttime in January, etc., things could have been much worse. The boy's bed was particularly warm that night. No more was ever said about the evening in the many years to come. However, the boy never forgot the experience. And as the years passed and as he slowly matured, he was fortunate to learn about a thing called grace. Then he came to realize that father's response on that cold evening was filled with grace. The grace of a father who loved his son unconditionally. The memory never fails to warm his heart. We're gonna sing a couple hymns now about the grace of God our Father, our Creator. The first one is we plow the fields and uh, it's going to be done uh, as an organ and piano duet. And we hope that at home you'll be able to see the words on the screen because uh, that's the way we thought it would be best represented so that you would be able to sing along uh, just as though you were here and also be able to see um, our musicians.
So our next hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. It's in Voices United, number 226. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. Let's just hold it a moment.
Our next hymn is a Camp Sempresca favorite I hear from Voices United 639. One more step along the world I go. We're gonna sing verses one and four and the refrain of chorus. I hope everyone is enjoying this uh, service of old hymns. I know to some, maybe it's not new, but to some others, it's fairly old, like they're older ones, ones I kind of grew up with. 
So anyways, uh, as I say, I hope you're all enjoying because we are like, I have to say, I think we all feel kind of tight, even the ones that are sitting down in the, in, in the pews here. We got to loosen up. This is, this is Sunday. This is Lord's Day. This is Father's Day. So anyways, I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers and grandfathers, uncles. So we always forget uncles. So anyways, um, this has been a pleasure for me. And uh, I thank everyone that has come to support this uh, venture that Jen and I <laughs> decided to do. And uh, so anyways, uh, and I hope everyone has a great summer. This is my last Sunday until the fall. So I hope everyone has a great summer. And I hope there's one gentleman that is so pleased to hear the organ. I won't mention any names. And I even gave a phone call last night and said they'd better be listening today regardless. So I hope they enjoy and this person enjoys the organ. I expect a phone call when I get home. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, okay, Jen, back to you. All right, let's sing Great Is Thy Faithfulness.
himself so that he can share with us a poem in honor of Father's Day. A tribute to dad. He never looks for praises. He's never one to boast. He just goes on working quietly for those he loves the most. His dreams, they are seldom spoken. His wants are very few. And most of the time his worries will go unspoken too. A steady firm foundation through all the storms of life. A sturdy hand to hold in times of stress and strife. A true friend we can turn to when times are good or bad, one of the greatest blessings is a man that we call dad. Thank you, Dave. Our next hymn is a little, a little newer and one of my favorites. Jesus, you have come to the lake shore. It's in Voices United 563. We're going to sing verses 1 and 4. And I'm so thankful for 
uh, them to be able to join us today, and hopefully you at home can hear their voices as we can hear their voices here in the sanctuary and feel lifted up and comforted by this group of voices that is able to sing together today. So this was recorded just earlier this week. We had a worshipful choir practice and recording session, and this is In the Garden. I'm just going to take a moment now to gather our hearts and minds in prayer. And uh, throughout this prayer, I'm going to be doing a little bit of singing too, just to keep in theme with our hymn sing. And, and I invite you to just draw to mind all those people and places and things that need our prayers today and to keep those in your hearts throughout this prayer. Gracious God. You know the joy of fatherhood and also the pain. For you witnessed the life and death of your son. And you see each day the triumphs and tragedies of us, your children. Lord God, our Father, sing us a song of love. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy path and sing, sing, sing to the maker too. In each of us, you find a hymn of praise. And when we pursue what is good, when we honor your commandments, when we seek your will and respond to your guidance, but we also sing off key and hit wrong notes through our own fears and insecurities when we overcome by the noise of this world and death to your song of love that calls us. Lord God, our Father, sing us a song of love. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy path and sing, sing, sing to the maker too. 
Gracious God, you know the joy and pain of fatherhood. And so now we pray for fathers everywhere. Help them to appreciate both the privilege and the responsibility they bear. And teach them to give freely of themselves so that they may discover the happiness, the fulfillment, and the inexpressible rewards that fatherhood brings. Lord God, our Father, sing us a song of love. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy cry. And sing, sing, sing to the Maker too. Give fathers wisdom, patience, and dedication, and grant them strength to persevere when children bring tears as well as laughter, anxiety as well as hope, pain as well as pleasure. Lord God, our Father, sing us a song of love. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy cry and sing, sing, sing to the maker. Reach out, we pray, to all fathers in such circumstances, those who question their ability to cope or fear they have failed, those striving to offer support or feel they have nothing left to give. And finally, hear our prayer for our children who on this Father's Day feel pain instead of joy. Those whose fathers have died those orphaned as children, those who have been mistreated, rejected, abused, and those from broken homes who barely see or know their fathers. Lord God, our Father, sing us a song of love. And by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the holy cry and sing, sing, sing to the maker We pray for all those in our hearts and minds who find this day a difficult one for whatever reason. We lift their names to you in our hearts and minds. Hear our prayers today, especially for the Squire family and for Donna. For those fathers who are grieving the loss of their children. For Bruce still recovering from a broken hip. And Norma. May we know that even in the darkest times, by the Spirit, you and I can join our voice to the Holy Cry and sing, sing, sing to the Maker too. For through Jesus, God sang us a song of love and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to listen as Colin uh, plays for us, Shall We Gather at the River? He played this at home this morning and recorded it and sent it to, to me. Another newer hymn, one of my favorites as well. It's Spirit Open My Heart. This is our uh, More Voices hymn. As we, you know, prepare to wrap up this service, we, we pray that our hearts will be open to all the joy and pain of living. So we sing this song together. again.
might be a worship service if we didn't have at least one little love up where the slide in advance and I didn't have my book and I couldn't remember what the words of the third verse were. Yeah, that's why I just switched the microphone. Oh, okay. So, so we had a couple of staff news during that hymn, but I hope you got the meaning of it and the intent. Um, we're going to sing uh, one last hymn all together. And we're going to do this one on the organ and the piano again, so we're going to switch to our camera that shows you the words on the screen, and hopefully you can see it from where you are at home. Uh, this is How Great Thou Art. It's one of those ones that maybe you pretty much have it memorized anyway, but we're going to sing verses 1 and 4. And yeah, we're going to switch to June's microphone so she can say something. Uh, once I want to thank Shirley for playing the piano with me. This is one of my favorite games. Uh, being a Presbyterian, of course, it was sung quite a lot there. And it was always played with piano and organ. So I'm practicing this piece. Well, I shouldn't really have to practice if I do. And I thought, why am I doing this by myself, especially when we have a lovely organ here? And so, anyways, I just the other day at home, Shirley. I could play it, I told her, I said, sure. Could you do me a favor? She says, watch me. Could you play the piano? I play the word with the hungry fellow. So sure, I never even hesitated. And uh, that's how come we got Shirley at the piano. And I greatly appreciate it. I hope everybody does too, because it's neat to have a piano in order. Don't expect it every Sunday. And <laughs> uh, uh, I certainly hope you enjoy that piece at New Show. Uh, you know, with the Presbyterian, but that's okay, you know, I can still do that. Okay.
May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by grace gives us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage our hearts to keep on singing and strengthen us in every good deed and word as we take our song into the world. Glad to be a part of the family of God. We go. So we're going to have our choir sing us out with their anthem, The Family of God. <laughs> 